On April 23rd, an airstrike hit a wedding in a remote mountain village in Yemen. It's left 22 people dead, including eight children. Cell phone videos of the attack went viral on social media, showing an apocalyptic landscape where bodies were strewn in the rubble. One child clung to his father's corpse, refusing to let go. My name is Sudarsan Raghavan, and I'm a correspondent for The Washington Post. I visited Raqqa a month after the strike to assess the impact of the attack on the villagers. One resident told me the village had lost its mind that day. Now many are left wondering, why us? More than 16,000 Yemeni civilians have been killed and injured, the vast majority by airstrikes, says the UN, since Yemen's civil war began in March of 2015. The conflict pits northern Houthi rebels against the Yemeni government, which is backed by a regional coalition led by Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. The coalition is the only actor that is using warplanes, mostly American-made jets. The airstrikes have struck hospitals, schools, markets, motels, even funeral gatherings. Raqqa also seemed a most unlikely target. The village is nestled in rugged mountains, a three-hour drive from the nearest city. Villagers told me there were no military bases, no signs of rebel activity. That's why human rights groups say the attack may have been a violation of international law, may even amount to a war crime. When I visited on May 25th, I found the debris from the April strike still remained. Amid toppled bricks, there was the remnants of shattered lives. More than half of those killed in Raqqa were musicians and dancers, including some children. They all belonged to an ethnically marginalized community, and the wedding jobs were one of the few they could get. Ahmed Rafay, one of the dancers, told me he lost his entire family. All, all 12. Next to his hut were mass graves. In Raqqa, the living too are suffering. Some residents have lost their hearing, children have lost limbs, while others carry shrapnel from the missile inside their bodies. Most villagers can't afford the three-hour drive to the nearest hospital. A few have moved out of the village entirely, but most don't have the option, and they remain. This includes the groom, Yaya Jafar, and his bride, Fatma. After their family house was destroyed, they moved into an animal shed. The two still aren't married legally because they can no longer afford the wedding certificate. Jafar has kept his blood-stained wedding robe as a reminder of what happened that night.